do with the vote says. All in favor opening the other two rooms? All in favor of giving them clothes? What? Okay. Open. Open. We're going to have to, to like, <laughs> so, open. Raise your hand. You need calm down. It's nice and dreary. Yeah. All right. So this is where we use probability tree. Um, there's two ways that this girl can win this tennis match. If she serves first, she's more likely to win. But she can't do both things. She can't serve first and not serve first. It's like two different realities are possible. When she serves first, she wins 55% of the time. When she has to receive first, then she wins 47% of the time, which is pretty good still. So whether she serves first or she doesn't, it looks like altogether the, the probability that she'll win is pretty good. Okay, but we gotta figure out how likely is it. There are two distinct, disjoint, not possibly overlapping possibilities. Right? Those two possibilities are that she serves first or she doesn't serve. There's no way that those could overlap. They're completely different realities. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. How did they decide who serves first? They flip a coin. Okay. Yeah, they flip a coin. So first we're going to use this tree like this and say that she wins the coin toss or she she loses. I don't know why I put this in there. She loses the coin toss. Uh, coin toss. Coin toss. Okay. So this is going to determine whether or not she serves first. If she serves first, it's in her favor, she serves not first, it's to her disadvantage. What's the probability that she will win this coin toss? 50%. 50%, just like any normal coin toss. 50% also that she'll lose this coin toss. So it's this 50-50 chance that decides which reality we're in, that she serves first or that she receives first. If she wins the toss, then how likely is it that she'll, serve, that she'll win? 0.55. What's the probability that she'll lose? Not that it matters on that whole Yeah. Okay, but that's that's only in this reality where she serves first. She might not serve first, which happens half the time. So half the time, she has a 0.47 probability that she'll win, and a 0.53 that she'll lose. So let's suppose she wins the coin toss. What's going to happen half the time? So half the time, she has a 55% chance, a 0.55 probability that she'll win. So, well, it only happened half the time. And half that time, it's 0.55 of that half of the time that she'll win. So all in all, this is 0.5 times 0.55 that she will win. So what is 0.5 times 0.55? 0.225. Yeah, that's right. Okay, now 0.47 of half the time, right? The other half of the time, 0.47 of that time, she's going to win as well. How likely is that 0.5 times 0.47? 1, 2, 3, 4. 2, 3, 5. She can win this way or she can win this way. Either way, she wins. They're, they are not overlapping, overlapping, they are distinctly separate things. They cannot both happen. So there's no overlap. So we can just add them together. 0.275 plus 0.235. Zero. And one. 0.510. It entertains me how great I was at like lining stuff up and doing addition, like the second grade. Um, could you just take like add them both together and then divide by two? You mean add 0.55 and 0.47? Yeah, and then divide by two. Yes, uh, I, I suppose we could. Does that work anytime? If it's 50 50. Okay. If this part is 50 50, then yeah. And I just proved it to myself using that little algebra. So 
uh, if it's one half times 0.55 plus one half times 0.47 equals the probability that she wins, that's what we want to know, right? Um, well, we can factor out this one half because it will have a factor of one half, 0.55 plus 0.47. So yeah, it looks like we just add those together and divide by two rather than one half times one plus one half times the other. Could you do that? If there was three different options for the first one, could you just add them all up and then divide by three? Mm-hmm. Because if you want instead of one half, it'd be one third times a thing plus one third times a thing plus one third times a thing. Times a thing. Yeah. So why did we learn this formula? Why did they just want to find the mean of the desired outcome? That would be only if it is equally likely that any of these like coin flips So the example I started out with last time was um, it wasn't equal to that. Let's say we, we're not flipping a coin, and if we're not trying to decide anything fairly. Uh, maybe it's the probability that it rains right, or doesn't rain. That's not always 50-50. Maybe there's a 60% chance of rain, and if, if it rains, we're not very good at winning in the rain. You know, football or something. It's tricky to win in the rain. Well, there's a 0.4 chance that it won't rain, and we're pretty good when conditions are fair. If it doesn't rain, if it's, if it's dry and, and sunny outside and everything, then let's say that our chance of winning is 80%, really good when the conditions are dry, which means there's a 20% chance that we'll lose. What about if it rains? Well, then we only have a 45% uh, chance of winning, which means we have a point. Uh, five five chance of losing. So in that case, we can't just add these together and then divide divide by what? Divide by eight. They're not the same. So we have to do 0 0.6 times 0.45. That's the probability that we win given that it rained that day. 0.4 times 0.8. That'd be the probability that we win given that it was dry that day. And then we could add those together. Even if we added like another branch to the tree, right. to, like win by more than four, do you lose by less than more than four D or something like that? Mm, that'd still be too just. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying like if we follow like one specific one, like 0. 0.6 times 0. 0.4 or five times another one, another one, and then the same like the other one. And, uh, yeah, uh, you know something could be likely to happen after you win. You know, uh, that girl will go to prom with you if you're on the winning team. Right? She's that likely to go, or she's not. She's the other amount likely to not go if you don't. Win. Uh, so, like something could be conditional on your winning or getting a, like a full ride scholarship. You know, like it's this big game, and if you win, then you'll have a certain percent chance of getting that scholarship. Or a certain percent chance of not getting that scholarship if you, uh, uh, even if you do win. So in the end, yeah, we just follow the branches all the way down, we take the probabilities and multiply them together. And then add them up. Yeah, and then the, in the end, we add them all up, whatever they are, as long as they fit the question. Any other questions? Yes? Rock, paper, scissors? Go. 26. 26. Thank you, Nathan. What number did you Club. That's a dub. That's a dub. Club. Then. No. Spade. <laughs> Yeah, big club. And which we read then the probability of a club times the probability of getting a spade if we are with replacement. It means the first card I pick, I look at it, I remember it, and then I put it back, and I have a full complete deck again to pick from with the second card. What's the probability of getting a club? 
One fourth. What's the probability of getting a spade? Also one fourth. 13 out of 52. 13 out of 52. So one out of 16. But without replacement means we don't put the first card back when we're done with it. What's the probability of C and which would be then a spade? Without replacement, well, the first card we pick is it's a, from a full deck. So it's just regular old probability of pulling a club out of a deck of cards. So 13 out of 50. Oh. Yeah, 13 out of 52. And then the next one would be uh, 13 out of 51. Right. That is the probability we get a spade, given that we've already picked a club. So that's how we read that line is given that, given that we got a club already. Um, Are these conditional? Like, does getting a green affect whether or not I'm likely to get a yellow next? It depends. What does it depend on? It depends on whether you're replacing it. Oh, well, it's a wheel that we're spinning, so you oh, can't hardly. I guess you could no. take that out. Kind of like Wheel of Fortune, where they sometimes take When you take away. a green off, and there's a yellow underneath? And there's a, a yellow, or just like the whole thing collapses on itself, and you just now have one less thing. It would be hard to do with a, a, a wheel that you spin. So they're, they're called. Uh, independent, they don't affect each other. One thing happening doesn't affect the other. Okay, so what's the probability of getting a green on this wheel? So if you look at the wheel in the book, how many greens are there? Seven. Seven. That's four, you don't even have a book. And how many things are there all together? Sixteen. 16. So there's four out of sixteen of getting a green. Times what, how many reds are there? Five out of six. Five, sixteen total. How many yellows are there? Four. Four, four again. I got one fourth times five sixteenths times one fourth again. Five out of sixty four times sixteen. No, sixty five. Two fifty six. Alright. That's right. If it's wrong, if it's wrong, let me know. If it's right, then go say it. <laughs> so we have three things happening in a row. Let's take a look at a, a picture of, of what's so. So we got simplified down here. One, this represents spinning the wheel once. How often is it going to come up green? One fourth of the time. So only one fourth of the time do we go on and try and get the second color. So we go on and we try to get the second color. Right? Even if even it was guaranteed to get a red only one fourth of the time where we're going to get a green and then a red, it's guaranteed to get a red. But it's not guaranteed. It only happens a certain part of the time. It'll happen five sixteenths of the time. So this is five sixteenths, a little better than a quarter. A quarter of five sixteenths of that quarter. And then, it, and then we go on that tiny amount of the time to try for the yellow. And that'll happen a fourth of that time. That tiny, tiny sliver. Sliver of this whole thing is how often we'll see that happen. It's five out of 256 times. It's a fourth of five sixteenths of a fourth, which is really small. Other question? Number 21.
house last night, so my alarm didn't go off, and I got schooling almost an hour later. Awesome. Yeah, but I didn't <laughs> So, yeah. what's the probability of getting a king or a diamond? Uh, either way, we win, but notice how there's, it's not that one thing happens and then another thing happens, even though there's two descriptions here, king, diamond. Um, just one thing or the other can happen. So either we get a king and we win, or we additionally get the uh, probability that we get a diamond and we win. We get to put all that so together. We together. Yeah. 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 And we have this or thing happening that increases our chances. And if, you know, if we pick it just right, we could have a guaranteed thing, right? If it's a probability of a black card or a red card, well, that's 100%. Right? We get to add those two together. But what's the probability that we get a king? Four. Mm -hmm. uh, Four out uh, of 52. Two. One out of 13. And then diamond is one thirteen. 13 out of 52, 1 fourth, right? And we get to add those together. So uh, we accept that. Except that there's no one that dying a king. Right, we got this king space, right? This is a space where kings exist. And here's the space where diamonds exist. I tried to draw it a little bigger because there's, there's more diamonds than there are kings. But right in the middle, there's some overlap. The overlap is king and diamond, the king of diamonds. Which king had that sword to his head? Has his uh, suicide. Yeah, I got that. Which one? Uh, the <laughs> the giants. Uh, so we have to subtract away, because what's happened, keep talking, what's happened is we've taken the king's space, right, four, and we've added this, the diamond space, but one of the kings is also a diamond, one of the diamonds is also a king. So there's, there's one in here, and one in here, they're actually the same card, and we've included it in both. So we're gonna take one of those out, uh, say this one, subtract that one out of 52 cards. That is uh, 16, that is uh, that one overlapping card. Uh, say 16 out of 52. Any other questions? Sure. Think about that overlap. Are there things that are included in both of these probabilities that I need to subtract out? Ready to go? We're good. All right, let's put everything away. We're all ready. Let's run. Okay. First, pick one card. Two the probability of getting six or a black card. So, like Daniel said, we just, what we're doing is just expanding our possibilities of succeeding, of winning, because we get to win on a six and on a black, or on a black, excuse me. Uh, either one. It's the probability of a six or black. It's the probability of a six plus the probability of a black. We can always write this next part minus probability of six and black. I'm not saying anything about this particular case, but sometimes this is zero. Sometimes there's no way that it can be both. Let's go through each of these. What's the probability of getting a six? One, I'm four out of 52. Four out of 52. Yeah, we'll sort of divide one out of 13, if you like that. Probability of getting a black? 26 cards are black, not just spades, not just clubs. Either one of those will work. 52. Minus, now are there any sixes that are also black? How many? Two. Two. We got six of clubs, six of uh, spades. Two out of 15. Okay, so 28. Seven out of 13. All right. If this were zero, if it were impossible to have both six and black in one card, what do we call that when that when that thing is zero? Is that where it starts with a D? Disjoint. Disjoint. It's the definition of disjointedness. It's when the probability of, of them both happening is zero. So this is uh, colored and numbered balls in a bag. It's probability that you'll pick an even number or a black.
black and colored bond. And in this case, we could just count them. There's, a, there's an even, okay, and this one is even, and also that must be black. This one's black, this one's even and it's black. Uh, this one's even, and this one's even. So we can just count them up. When you can look at them that way, it's possible to count them pretty easily. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, out of 10, three out of five. We did that subtraction piece right here, maybe subconsciously, where we did not count these twice. This description would count these twice. We would get the probability of even or black. What's the probability of an even ball? There's half. Half, yeah, five out of 10. Plus the probability of black, what's the probability of black? Three, three out of 10, there's three, three balls that are uh, black. But then we have to subtract two, these two right here. They got counted here, they got counted here, so we gotta take them back out. Uh, I suppose we should get common denominators here, so we get five tenths plus three tenths minus two tenths is six tenths is three fifths. Same, same probability. This actually gets into what we're going to do today, where you do one kind of a thing with either like two possibilities, like a, a coin's two possibilities are clear, heads and tails, um, and we want to do it multiple times in a row and see what's the probability that it happens so many times. This time it's going to happen every time. What's the probability you get 10 heads in a row, or how do we calculate it? Only one half raised every time. Good. Because the probability of that first heads is a half. Okay, then half of the half of the time we'll get a heads and then another heads, and half of half of half of the time we'll get a third heads and all the way down we get 10 in a row, which as Daniel said, that's one half times itself 10 times. We just do one half times 10, that's easy. 1 over 1024, you know your powers of 2, or 0. 0.00. draw two cards without replacement, you don't put them back, what is the probability you will draw a six and then, then, read and as then, because two things are happening, one right after the other. Uh, so it's the probability of a six, four, there are four out of 52. What's the probability of getting a face, when you, when you don't replace it, you have to say given that you already got a six. Well, that is Out of 16, score that person out of 16. All right, so at the end of the day, we'll be able to, to use, and more importantly, I hope, uh, it is more important, what I'm hoping is that uh, you will understand what it all means, why, like, we're gonna construct it. We're gonna build up this formula, and you're gonna understand what all these pieces are. Um, 
So I'll leave that there, because you, you might want to write that down. That's a personal preference. Um, but I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a simple question. I don't expect you to use this, this formula. Actually, I would prefer if you don't try and use this formula. Just use your prior knowledge, the stuff that we've learned so far to answer this question. Um, let's say we're going to roll a die. Six possibilities, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you get a three. You can choose to say six sided die. Um, let's find the probability that all rolls are a three. Does all that make sense? Roll a die, that's a six sided die, ten times. We are just looking for threes, okay? That's the binary part of this. The experiment part is rolling a die. The binary part is you're just looking for one thing, and we call that thing a success. Okay. So success is a three. If you don't see that happen, you fail. Right. So we can, we can sum up a lot of experiments like this. Um, you just look for a particular outcome. And if it doesn't happen, we don't count it. Okay. The trials here, that would be 10 trials. We do the experiment, rolling a die, for 10 trials, that means just 10 times that we roll a die. It's binary, <laughs> meaning we just want a three and we don't care about anything else. We could, we could make it something else, we could make it even, we could make it uh, a number less than two, or well that would be only one, less than three, like we can say whatever we want it to be, but we have to say we're looking for this one thing. The probability of K successes, well how many successes are we, go, are we looking at here? How many times do I want to get three? Every time. Every time. All ten times. Okay. So again, forget about the formula. We're going to piece it together. But I want, I, I kind of, it seems to help out when you see the pieces falling into place. Oh, I see how that fits in there and how that's part of the formula. I guess we should say, it's not anything that I have to tell you. It's obvious from the experiment, but what's the probability of succeeding? Just use your prior knowledge, the stuff that we've already learned. You know you're going to do something, you know, something's going to happen, and then this, and then this, and then this, and then this. We're going to have a series of events happen all in a row. We know what the probability of that thing happening is. So uh, while I copy and paste this, that's probably about the time you need to get this in the Explain to us how you got one six to the ten. Yeah, because I'm on six sided roll, you only want three. Yeah. So that's one six. Okay, so it's the first roll. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then you're gonna roll the die ten times, uh -huh. expecting one six every time. Every time. So one six raised to the ten. Yeah. It's just one six and one six because it's gonna be one six and one six and one six and one six of the time that we'll get. And this is a really unlikely thing to happen. Um Third, way, third roll will be a six, fourth roll will be a, uh, or sorry, a three, which is one six, all the way down to the tenth roll, which is also a three, which is a probability of one out of six. We just multiply those all together, and we have uh, one six to the tenth. Okay. So this is where the number of successes, k, is equal to what? Number of successes is what k represents. How many successes is that? Ten. Ten successes. All right, let's do k equals zero. I'll never do the three. No threes. So let's see if we can calculate that. 
I don't think I was asleep. I saw her. All right, so how are we going to calculate this? Five over six. Okay, so we're gonna fail, right? We're not gonna succeed. We're gonna we're gonna fail. The first roll is gonna be pretty likely to not be a three. It's gonna be five six probability that it's not gonna be a three. Yeah. What's the second roll gonna be? Five over six. The probability is gonna be five six that it's going to not be a three. All the way through. All the way through to the tenth roll. Uh, but uh, when you do it, you're gonna have to take. Five, um, five to the ten uh -huh. power, and you're gonna have to take six to the tenth power. Yes, you will. That's that's five sixths to the tenth. And either you need to use parentheses around your five six when you raise it to the tenth, or you're going to need to do five to the tenth, take six to the tenth, and divide those two. I got sixteen percent. A little bit more likely, right? It's like five. Approximately 0.16 something. But I'm just really long guessing. Alright. Well, pretty easy, right? When they're all the same, we just multiply the probability of success by itself 10 times or failure by itself 10 times. So let's talk about the same experiment, same number of trials, same definition of success, but let's have a different number of successes and see what we can come up with. I roll 10 times. Success, that's getting a 3. What's the probability of 1? Okay, now when I put 1 there, I don't mean the probability that you get a 1. This is different. Right? This, is, this is called binomial experiment. The 1 there represents how many times you succeed. Okay? How many times you get a 3. So what are the odds that we get a 3 once in 10 times? Just once, exactly once. Go for it. Go for it. All right. So here's what a lot of you have written down. This is a, a great way to do it. You, you look at a roll. Let's let that roll be that three, right? Probability of one six. So that's our first roll, and it has a one six probability of being a three. The next one, and actually all of the following ones, we want to not be threes. So the second roll is got a probability of five six because it's going to not be a three. This is not going to be a three, so it's got a probability of five, six. All the way down, and they're all five, six, all the way to the last roll. Also has a probability of five, six. Okay. We can certainly shorten this up, right? It's going to be one sixth times what? Five, six times itself, nine times. All right, we come out with like 3%, right? And that's absolutely correct for that very specific scenario. So I'm driving on the, the point here, hopefully, that this is only one of several different ways that we can get one, three, in ten rolls. Order three, four, three happened the second time. Yeah, it's not so much, though, that order matters. It's just that to count all the possibilities, it could happen in the first or the second or the third or the fourth. So it's not exactly that we're counting permutations here. Um, it's kind of like right in the middle. Of yeah, it is. I mean, we are going to use combinations. That's part of the formula, right? That's got to be something to do with it. But we, we don't need to like consider this one, or this this roll of a three to be in each of these positions because thirty-two percent order matters. It's because this scenario can happen, or we can expand our, our likelihood, our probability, right, by letting the second one be a three, or the third one be a three, or a fourth one being a three, the fifth one being a three, or any of the ten being three. So is this right now? So it's our job now to, well, let's look at that possibility that we have the second one be a three. So the first one is not a three. The second one will let be the three, and then the rest of them will let be not three. So they all have a five, six probability all the way down the line to the tenth roll. What's the probability of this specific thing happening? Three percent. The same thing. Three percent. One sixth times five sixths to the ninth. So no matter where I put that three roll, in here, it's always going to be that 3%. It's always going to be exactly this. So now all we have to do, like, if I, if that, if this was it, if it's just these two, I just add these together, and I have the probability. But it's not just those two. How many ways can that roll be put? 10. 10, exactly. It's very easy to count. Here, here, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, or tenth. There's 10 ways. 
So there's a 32.3% chance that you'll roll one for me. Right. If we take this and we add it to itself 10 times or take it, multiply it by 10, 10 times 1 sixth times 5 sixths to the ninth. This is the number of ways to roll one, three, in one, three. In so if we increase ten. the number of rolls, the odds would get lower. Yeah, because then we have more five sixths, right? But if we but then we'd have more possibilities, right? That that number would be higher than ten. Yeah. Two. So the, 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 and the more rolls, um, but your uh, but your average uh, of getting a three is more likely because you're getting more rolls to get uh, a three. That means that your percentage of getting a three. But what we're saying is not, not one or more, we're just saying exactly one. So as we roll more, wouldn't it become more likely that we'd get more than just one three? Yeah. Like if we limit it to exactly one, well, it's going to, you're betting that you'll like not get threes for a really long time. Yeah. But if you roll a die enough times, you should get some threes. So the more rolls we go out to, now we are saying we're going to go longer and longer and longer without getting any threes, which is going to bring our probability down. But if we bring it to, maybe if we just do six rolls, maybe that would be pretty likely to just get one roll in six, one three in six rolls. Yeah, because if we, one six. if we went out, if we rolled the die one more time, the odds of getting just a three, one three goes down to 27%. ways you can get one, three, and ten rolls. This is the probability that you'll get that one, three. This is the probability that you'll get those nine and not threes. Not necessarily in a row, but they're all there. All those factors of five, six exist. They're, they're going to get multiplied by themselves uh, nine times. Uh, so it comes out to what, 0 0.32 you said? Not 0.33? Not rounded up to 0.33 or anything? Okay. I'll just see if you can see that. Okay. So, same game, roll a die 10 times, but now we're going to get two threes, exactly two threes. And this is where it gets a little tricky. Same thing, but you get two threes and six. Mm -hmm. When I put that probability of two, that means probability of two. The number two. Okay. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's say the first two of them are the threes, right? Represented by the probability of one sixth, probability of one sixth, then five sixths all the way down. Five six all the way down through the rest of the rolls, right? So let's look at what's the probability that this particular thing happens, particularly the first two rolls are the threes we're looking for. What's that probability? That's right. But is that the only way to get two out of Ten B threes? No, here's a, a one, at least one more. One sixth, then five six. So a three, and then a not three, and then a three, and all the rest are not threes. What's the probability that that happens? Oh. So the same. We got two one sixths, and we got eight five sixths. That we're multiplying together. Thing is that there's over ninety different ways you can 
What? How'd you come up with 90? Because I figured that uh, uh, with my ways, uh, that um, you put one, uh, put one, 1.9 on one, uh, like 10 for instance, uh, like on the 10th roll, and then you gotta, uh, you gotta put uh, another 1.16 uh, 1 on any of the other rolls. Yeah. So that, mean, uh, so that means that there's not, uh, nine different ways for every roll that you do. So 10 times nine. So, yeah, so 10 times nine, which is 90, and uh, how many different ways is possible to have two to end, have, um, and to land a three, mm -hmm. with two threes mm -hmm. in 10 different tries. I like how you're thinking, because you're saying, let's, two of them have to be threes. So let's put that one six right there, or anywhere you want, right? Yeah. So that's, that's 10 possibilities, I can choose any of the 10, right? So any of those 10 to be the three. Then I have to pick the second one, right, to be the three. Uh, so maybe I'll throw it here. Well, there's nine remaining positions to do that, right? So I have, I have to choose first the, the position for the first three, and then the position for the second three. And so I have 10 choices for the first one, and then I've taken away one of those, and so I have nine for the rest. 10 times nine is a really good idea. The only problem with that is it's two times too big. Because, so let's say you, you're choosing this guy to be the first one, and then you gotta choose some other thing to be the second one, right? Yeah. All right, so you're doing that, you pick this one to be the, the first one, you pick all the other ones to be the second one, and then you choose another one to be the first, right? You move it to here, and you choose all the other second positions. In doing that, you are gonna repeat this scenario by doing this. You're gonna choose this to be the first one, and then you're gonna choose this to be the second one. So that's the same thing. So I'm so taking it t instead of 10, make it five? Nope, make it 10 times nine divided by two. Divided by two because for every play, every way you can put two be, threes down, you can rearrange them in two factorial ways. Yeah. Right? So what you're describing is simply 10 C two. Right? 10 positions for those two to go in I choose any two, any combination of two out of those 10 to be the threes, the successes. That exactly what you're describing is 10 C2. Because the order doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I put the first one here, the second one there, or the first one there, and the second one there. And so we use combinations instead of permutations. So there's 45 different ways to take these 10 and to assign two of them to be successes. We had 10 people, and we're going to choose two of them to be uh, on a basketball team together. Right? There'd be 45 different ways to do that. There's also 45 different ways to choose. Assuming choosing the best players, which we choose randomly. Randomly, of course. So this is the probability of any very specific situation where two out of the 10 are uh, threes. And this is how many ways that can happen. So we take this 45 times the probability of any particular scenario where two of the rolls are three. Right. How about if we want, instead of two threes, how about three rolls are Three to three to three, and the rest are not threes. This could be it. This could be it. This could be it. And then this could be all the rest, not threes. And this could be a three. And this could be a three. And then this could be a not a three. And this could be a three. And this could be a not a three, and all the rest be. Probability of, of any way that I could arrange those three threes would be there'd be three of the one sixth probability, so we're gonna multiply three one sixths. So that's one sixth to the third. The rest of them, the rest of the ten, are gonna be just ten minus that three, so seven. We're gonna take that probability, is it gonna be there seven times? And how many ways in these ten rolls can I arrange three of them to be three?
scratch. How much is that going to just look? Having it permanent, you could now give it on a test. You could build it yourself. Agreed. Okay. Then we'll be out of time. Yeah. Redirive it every time. But if, like me, you're, you're wondering about this completely unrelated, I was talking to a, a friend one time and we were saying, well, what's, what's the probability that this thing would happen? Or, well, I've tried it this many times, what's the probability it would happen so many times out of that many times? And I actually, having forgotten that there, this formula existed, I built it from scratch. So, well, you know, we've got to arrange it in many ways, and each probability of success is going to be there this many times, and failure is going to be there this many times. So now that we understand how to use the formula, we're going to bring in some more vocab, jargon, symbols, and stuff. Scatter it. Here's what we call a random variable. It's x. Yep. So this random variable um, is just a capital letter. It's usually a capital letter rather than a, a lowercase letter. And uh, its value represents a particular outcome. In this case, x being 3 or being less than 3, so being 3 or 2 or 1 or 0, um, does not represent rolling the number 3, but rolling a 3 three times, or 2 times, or 1 time, or 0 times. Okay. In this case, out of 10 times. Does that make sense? So the random variable, in this case, um, is just represents a particular outcome in this case, how many times are successful. So what this is really saying, basically, It's not that we get the number three or we get the number two or the number one or the number zero, but that we roll a three three times out of ten, two times out of ten, and one time out of ten. Like exactly what we've been calculating so far. So x being less than or equal to three is not about the number that appears on the die, but how many times we get a three. Out of ten times. Out of the ten times. So uh, out of the ten rolls, you get the number three, three times or less. I should really say three times or fewer. What's the difference between less and fewer? Um, I can have less milk, and I can have less money, and I can have less charisma. These things that used to say when I jump from two milk to three milk. You can have two and a half milk, two and a half gallons of milk, two and a half, two and three quarters of cups of milk. Or you can call continuous. Milk. What? Or you can have fewer milk. You can have fewer milk. You can fewer have fewer cups of milk. You can have fewer cups of milk. Yes. Once you make it so that it is what we call discrete, like I can have fewer desks. You can, I, I can have one desk, two desks, three desks, four desks, five desks. I count them you know, in increments of, of one. That's fewer. I can have fewer of something that I count in ones. I can have less of some stuff that I can have, well, like a decimal amount of, a continuous uh, value. Decimal? Yeah. Yes? So in this case, then it would be rolling it 10 times. Uh, but since uh, you're taking three and then and then three or fewer, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's 50% uh, of the numbers on the die. So 
when, uh, when the probability of roll, uh, rolling that with 10 rolls is 50, uh, 50%. Mm -hmm. Cause you're, you're confusing again this three with the number three on a die. This three is the number of times that you succeed, the number of times that you get the three. Right? We could change the number to five, and this would still mean the number of times you get three fives. This three represents how many times you get what you want to get. Okay. Oh, okay. What's the probability that I get a three threes, or two threes, or one three, or no threes? Because that would be three or So to do that, though, it, it's a little bit of work, because there's not like a nice little formula to calculate for three or fewer successes. We need to find the probability that we get one success, the probability that we get two successes, the probability that we get three successes, also the probability that we get no successes. But if, if you're paying attention, we have done all of these so far. We started out with, uh, oh no, we haven't done all of these. Have we done all of these? We have done all of these. So we started out with the uh, probability that x is 10, where we get all of our threes, all 10 of threes. Then we moved on to no threes, then we did one three, then we did two threes. There's where we had three rolls or threes. Wait, if we're doing a die, how can we get zero? Zero threes. We don't get we don't get three any of the ten rolls. Okay, okay, that's what zero is. So here's of three rolls. Here's of two rolls. Here's all the work for that, or at least the you know what you would throw in the calculator to get your decimal. Here is uh, one. One time we get a three. That's the thirty-two percent. And right here. See, this is where we get no successes. So we can take our 0.16 and our 0.32 and our whatever this is, and whatever this is, then we take the probability that we get no threes, then we get one three, then we get two threes, then we get uh, three threes out of 10 rolls. We add them all together. So this was 0.16, and this was 0.32, and this was, we didn't actually run those numbers. Did anybody do that to get the decimal for that one? For point zero. Huh? Oh, for two? For two. That would be 10C2 times 1 6 to the 2 times 5 6 to the Down. If somebody disagrees, we can change it. I'll show you real quick. Just, you're not sure how to find that. That's uh, 10. C3. Okay, times. One sixth to the third times five sixths to the seventh. This is probably I get exactly zero threes, exactly one three, exactly two threes, exactly three threes. Add them all together. Let's see, I get five, eight, and ten, sixteen, eight, nine, ten, eight, six, five. Probability they get three or fewer threes out of ten rolls. Really good. 
close to, you know, encroaching on 90%. Lottery with my hand. Well, sure. But then the lottery would pay you less. Yes, you'd buy a lot. So you'd have to buy like a thousand tickets. Mm -hmm. Just like the lottery. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. At least one more thing. Is there any questions about? That. We've only been working with die rolls, 10 die rolls, and I can figure out how many people we get through the OS Plus version getting similar sheets. Hopefully it helps you understand how we can build this formula, what this formula is all about. So we're going to have to graph from the... No. Is that a thing? Sure. Like, if you look in the book, there's a thing called a probability distribution. You're going to have to read one, but you don't have to write one. Here's what a probability distribution would look like. For this example, we've got several probabilities here, so we can at least get our, our probability distribution started. We start with zero successes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is how many successes we could possibly have. We start with zero, that's at 0 0.16. Let's say that's that much. And 0 0.32 is twice as much. And 0.23 is uh, you know, a little lower than that. Oh, yeah. No, that was 0.29. Oh, I, I did it wrong. Okay, 0.29. So uh, we'll, we'll raise it a little bit. A little bit bigger than 0.23. Uh, 0.155. Uh, that's around about a half of that one. Then we have to change the to 0.5. Say what? We're changing to 0.29 when we have to change That's true. 0.8. That's. Uh, I'm going to check my arithmetic on that. That doesn't sound right. Uh, uh, 10 rows, you have a 92.5% chance. Oh, 9.8. But now it's 0.29. That's so six tenths larger. Oh, that was already six tenths. I was reading that wrong. Yeah, and it, yeah, it takes it up to 12, which means we got to carry the one. 0.925. So there's a very likely. It almost seems like it's not correct. Like, you know, like out of 10. Well, I know, yeah, it seems like that. Like it seems so likely that you'll get three or fewer. What about all the? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten is really that likely that or that unlikely that we'll get four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten rolls. It's um, a, it's moderately unlikely. It's pretty unlikely. It's it's well, less than like 10%. four and five are moderate, moderately unlikely. But and ten's very unlikely. It's like three zeros or four zeros yeah. as a decimal and a one. Yeah. So we might get up to like ninety five percent. Yeah. So. The rest of this, like the total of the rest of this, must be like point zero seven five. 0.075. So just a little over 7% that anything here will happen. Which is a pretty interesting slim chance of that. Which we wouldn't even have to figure out from 10 like through like probabilities and stuff. Out of all the errors, just try to find Right. So you're using what's called a complement. If I want to know about four or more, the probability that I'll get four or more threes, it would be a lot less work to figure out these ones and subtract them from 100%. That's the complement. Okay. So now, now yes? Never mind. We're going to collect a little data and then we're going to turn it into a binomial experiment. Now, we don't have a very big uh, data set here, but we're just going to do our best. So other people in this room, myself included, Connor walked away. But uh, how many people here have a smartphone? Raise your hand if you own a smartphone. 
or if your parents own it, you get it. Okay. You guys are one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so six out of, what do we have, six, seven, eight, nine people? Okay. Six out of nine own smartphones and the others at least don't. Maybe they don't, don't even have a cell phone at all, but six out of nine people have smartphones, at least in this class. Okay. So what happens with collecting data is you kind of assume that you can project this onto the rest of the population, the rest of the people. Let's say the rest of the people in this area, the Missoula, Florence area. Um, you just kind of assume that everybody, like that ratio holds outside of these walls as well, which isn't always true. Right. But you see how it, we just only ask nine people. This is not a very good debt. This might actually be exactly right, but we can't be really very sure because we only ask nine. It could be exactly right, or it could be like wildly off. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have to uh, take a, a look at the uh, the population. Yeah, look at everybody. Look, or, or ask lots more people. Ask yeah. like a hundred people. Now you have really good idea. Ask yeah. people in their age groups because most of us are. Right. Yeah. Let's just face it. You guys are all in high school. Yeah. Older people won't really use smartphones that much. That's probably true. Probably older. Well, they are less likely to use them, but they also have more money. Right. Zero percent of the older people so they can afford to do it. Yeah. So, so anyway, let's just assume that the ratio of people who own cell yeah. own smartphones out in the world is just six out of nine. Just six out of nine all across the board. Okay. This is this is what happens while you collect data and then you just apply it to the rest of the population. So in other words, what am I saying? I'm saying what's the probability that when I go out and ask someone randomly, what's the probability that they do own a smartphone based on our our two thirds. Two thirds. If I project them to the rest of the population, I'm saying that the probability is two thirds that the person I ask at random owns a smartphone. Not just a, sm a cell phone, but a smartphone. So now let's turn into a binomial experiment. That means that we do the experiment, asking a question, a yes or no question, do you own a smartphone, to a lot of people, and then we ask ourselves what's the probability that X amount of people respond in whatever way we want them to respond. 100%. What? No. Okay. Let's say we ask 100 people. So, like two people in here at the school, I bet we have that two thirds right here, I bet that would really uh, be pretty correct here in the school with a whole bunch of students and stuff like that. But I bet you yeah, went out there and stuff, they can't be correct. Let's say we just go out to a park or something, and then we go to the mall, and then we go to a random intersection in town, and we just ask people that we can find, try to get a, a really mixed group of people that we ask. We ask 100 people. Uh, and we ask them, do you own a smartphone? What's the probability that um, 30 of them, exactly 30 of them, say that they do own a, a, a smartphone? Same as the rolling a die. We're not rolling a die, we're asking people things. One thing. We're not rolling it 10 times, we're asking 100 people, we're asking the question 100 times. So we want to get a yes, right? If we don't want to get a three, we want to get a yes. The number we get for that is 34, 30 yeses. That's 100 C30? It's 100 C30. That's how many ways that 30 out of the other people can say yes, right? The first 30, the last 30, the middle 30, the, the 30 right at the, at the last third or whatever, you know, where you can put that 30 wherever you want, sprinkled in there, every other person, whatever it takes. That's all the ways that 30 out of 100 people can respond affirmatively. And then two thirds raised to the thirtieth. That's right, because if I put down 30 things, 30 positions, and I put down all the, the people who say yes, then that's gonna be 30 of those two thirds probabilities. And then that means one third times one third. One third raised to the 70th power. That's right. Now keep in mind this is an exact amount, exactly 30. Not 30 or more, not between 30 and 50, but exactly 30. So, Together. 100 C30 times two thirds to the two thirds two thirtieth times uh, one third to the seventieth. Whoops, he didn't go back and fix that. 
one third centimeters. Multiply that by one hundred and thirty. That's thirteen zeros. That's a very it's small number. Yeah. Raise the negative fourteenth power. Times ten raised to the negative. Six point one two times ten to the negative fourteen times, which means you can just move your decimal place over thirteen times, and you, or fourteen times, which you have thirteen zeros, six one two. Really unlikely, but again, that's exactly thirty people out of hundred saying that. Let's figure out what the odds are of a hundred people saying. Okay. Let's change it to a hundred C one hundred times two thirds to the one hundred and one third. Zero, which is just one, and this is just one. So it's just two thirds of the one power. Not very late. You guys have a good weekend.